Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining and welcome to this month's Connect with Control-M. The topic for today's session is part one of securing Control-M 9.0.18 communication using SSL for Control-M client applications. My name is Eric Epperson and I'm a technical support analyst for Control-M in the Americas. I'd like to introduce today's panelists, Cody Belcher, Neil Blanford, and Octavio Vasquez. For today's agenda, first, we'll discuss changes in the Control-M Enterprise Manager communication architecture for Control-M 918 and how this simplifies implementing SSL to communicate with the client applications. Next, will be an overview of the SSL certificate requirements. Then we'll do a demonstration of implementing SSL for EM clients. We'll do uh, some helpful information and tips, and we'll wrap up with a live Q&A session. Now, as we can see in the next slide, in Control-M 918, the clients will communicate directly to the web server, while the Corba naming service is used to broker EM server communication internally. Clients will include the workload automation scheduling GUI and the Control-M configuration manager as well as such services as Batch Impact Manager and self-service access through a web browser. These clients use HTTP handled by the Apache Thrift, which is a scalable cross-language framework for client server communication. In previous versions of Control-M, the Corbin naming service was used was responsible for brokering communication between both clients and the EM server processes. This change simplifies the process of implementing the security of SSL by making it necessary in most circumstances only to deploy a certificate authority chains to client key stores and create a PKCS12 key store on the EM web server. As we overview this process, you might notice that it's similar to the process for the web server of previous Control-M versions. Before configuring the EM web server for SSL, it will be necessary to make some arrangements regarding certificates. It's highly recommended to speak with your organization's information security and OS admin teams about these requirements and how to meet them according to necessary standards. You'll need to obtain the proper CA chain along with assigned X509 SSL certificate for the EM server host. In the process of creating the certificate, there will also be a private key file. It's important to keep this, this key file secure. Anyone with it will be able to decode your communications. It's also important to understand what is a certificate authority or CA chain. The CA chain includes the required information of the root and possible intermediate certificates necessary to verify authenticity. The same CA chain will need to be deployed to the key store of the client users. Again, you'll need to speak to your InfoSec and OS admin teams to establish a timeline for this to be accomplished. Each EM server will require its own certificate. In most cases, it will be necessary to make sure that the value of its common name, or CN, is set to the fully qualified domain name of the EM host. In some cases, it may be required to set an alternate host value in the certificate. This will have to be determined by speaking with your InfoSec team. To work with the EM server, the certificate will, be needed to, will need to be added to a PKCS12 key store. We've chosen this format because it simplifies the process of protecting sensitive information, such as the private key. There are a number of utilities available to convert SSL certificates. In the following demonstration, we'll be using OpenSSL to accomplish this conversion. Now, moving to the demo. First, we'll show clients using default non-SSL communication. As you can see here, we have the workload automation GUI client. We'll open the environment, and we can see that we're connecting to the EM server on port 
18080. And if we test it, we can see we can connect successfully. We'll also open a web browser. As you can see, we are connecting using HTTP to the EM server, again, on port 18080. Now we'll move to the EM server to implement SSL. We'll move to this directory here. Oops. We've created this directory on the EM server. Here it is. Let's clear this screen. In this directory, you can see we've placed our key file, our uh, certificate that was created for this EM server, and the CA chain. Now, these files can be anywhere that's accessible by the EM server's user account. Now, we'll go ahead and use an open SSL command with the PKCS12 option to export these files into a .p12 PKCS key store. It'll prompt us to create a password and then to verify that password. Once that file has been created, it'll be necessary to move or copy it to the control M INI slash SSL directory. Then we can move to that directory. And we can see that that file was created here or was moved here. Now, once we have the PKCS12 key store in place, we'll need to use the, man the utility manage web server to manage the web server's connectors. Manage web server is a new utility in Control M918, and we have more information available in the documentation. Now, in the manage web server, we have an interactive menu that allow us to manage the web server's connectors. So if we use option one to list them, we can see by default that we have two connectors, one using HTTPS to port 8443, and another connector using HTTP to port 18080. To ensure that our users are connecting using SSL, we'll need to delete both of these connectors. So we'll use option three first to delete the non-secure HTTP connector. Oh, let's go back to option four. And then we'll choose that HTTP connector and delete it. It'll ask us to confirm. And once we do an option one to list them again, we can see we only have the HTTPS connector. Now, it'll be necessary to delete this connector as well, and we'll need to create a new one. We'll need to create a new one to associate the key store that we just created. Now, to create that connector, We'll go ahead and use another manage web server command. Here we have manage web server dash action create secure connection. It'll ask us to enter the file name. We'll only need to enter the file name. We won't need to enter the path since we 
it's already looking for it in the INI slash SSL directory. Now it'll be important to keep track of the password that you used when creating the key store because you'll be prompted to enter it here. Now this may take several minutes uh, to complete. Um, again, uh, as uh, I stated earlier, uh, we deleted the existing connectors uh, to ensure that your users will be connecting with SSL. And we're creating this new connector so that will be associated with the key store that we just created. Now, once this process is finished, we'll need to recycle the web server and the EM configuration agent. We'll go ahead and do that with commands here. Uh, we'll stop the web server first. The same process can be done from the CCM, but once the web server starts to recycle, we'll lose connection to the CCM. So while we're on the Enterprise Manager, we'll go ahead and do it from the command line. Stopping the configuration agent, it will ask us for the database password and then to confirm that we want to stop the configuration agent. Once that has stopped, we'll then use one command to start the configuration agent and web server. There it is. And we'll go ahead and start both of them. Should only take a second. And yep, they have started. Now we can move to our clients to verify that they are communicating in SSL. Now it may take up to 10 or 15 minutes for these configuration changes to take effect. So in the interest of time of this presentation, we'll be connecting to another environment on the same host that we already have SSL configured. So we'll be connecting with HTTPS. We'll be connecting to this host. And as you can see, we're using the fully qualified domain name, which was the common name on the certificate. And in this environment, we'll be connecting on port 8444. And as you can see, we have connected to this environment using SSL over HTTPS. We'll minimize that. We'll go to our workload automation GUI client. We'll again put in the fully qualified domain name as we had in the CN of the certificate. We'll connect to port 8444. And if we test it, yes, we should receive a a message, it connected successfully and it's been updated with SSL. We can save it. And as you can see, once we've saved this change, we have here in the environment, a lock icon indicating we're using SSL. And then in the upper right hand of the login screen, you can see we have that same lock. So we'll be able to log into this environment using SSL. Okay, we'll move back to the presentation where we have a short summary of these steps. Again, first you'll want to make sure that you have the CA chain deployed to your client key stores, an X509 certificate signed by the CA chain. We'll then want to convert that certificate to a PKCS12 format. And then that PKCS12 key store will be saved as a .p12 file to the Enterprise Manager's INI slash SSL directory. We'll then use the Manage Web Server utility to create the necessary secure connector and recycle the web server and configuration agent. Our next slide. We have some helpful information and tips. A new certificate will be necessary for each Enterprise Manager instance. 
including distributed and high availability environments. It's important to note that the BMC provided demonstration certificates as well as certificates that are created by the manage SSL feature in the CCM are not intended to be used with the EM web server. It will be necessary to create a certificate with a CA chain. If you have more than one enterprise manager server on a host, it'll be necessary to reconfigure the web server's port 8009. This information is in the listed knowledge article that's available through support.bmc.com. If your EM server is on a Windows host, it'll be necessary to use the full path to any files that are being used as an input or output in OpenSSL commands. We do have these steps available in further detail, available in our online documentation with the link listed here. We'd like to thank you for taking your time out of your day to attend. We're hoping the information provided was useful.